Hi, I'm Flannery, and behind me is Linda and Matt, and we're going to be talking about the C Seattle Aquarium and the Seafood Watch program. The Seattle Aquarium's mission of conservation aligns with their decision to join the Monterey Bay Aquarium's Seafood Watch program to support sustainable seafood. The Seafood Watch program helps consumers make choices for healthy oceans. The choices recommended by this program are science-based, peer-reviewed, and use ecosystem-based criteria according to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. The Seattle Aquarium receives the pocket guides from the Monterey Bay Aquarium and doesn't have any input on its formatting or any changes. The pocket guides indicate which seafood items are the best choices, good alternatives, and those that should be avoided. The aim of these pocket guides is to help promote sustainable seafood. The Monterey Bay Aquarium defines sustainable seafood as wild, diverse, and healthy ocean ecosystems that will exist long into the future. The goal of our research was to learn more about visitor awareness and knowledge concerning the pocket guides distributed at the Seattle Aquarium. Using this goal, we developed two evaluation questions, one to see to what extent are visitors aware of the program, and another to see the extent to which visitors understand the pocket guides. And I will be talking about our methods and our instrument now. Um, we chose to create a survey that we administered to the visitors. Our survey was composed of 14 various questions, some that were open-ended and others that were not. And it, we chose these questions in order to assess visitors' awareness and their ability to use the Seafood Watch Pocket Guide. Um, for our sampling method, we sort of used a mixed approach, and by that I mean um, on days and times when the aquarium was busier, we used a more systematic approach and we asked every third visitor. And on slower days and times, we used a convenience method and asked whoever was around. And we conducted our surveys near the fur seal exhibit at the aquarium. And doing that ensured that visitors had every, opportun every opportunity to learn about the Seafood Watch program and the pocket guides via signage in the museum and also at presentations like an animal feeding or a dive show. And this also ensured that the visitors had every opportunity to pick up a pocket guide themselves, so at the entrance when they paid for admission or in the aquarium at designated spots and card holders. And before beginning data collection, we pilot tested our instrument. And based on pilot testing, we made a number of changes to our instrument. One of the most important things we did during pilot testing was we developed a task in which we would have the, user, the visitors use the pocket guide. And the task was developed in order to assess their understanding of how to use the pocket guide. In the task, we asked them four questions. We asked them to identify a best choice for salmon, a good choice for crab, a good alternative for crab, and a best choice or and a poor choice for tuna. Sorry. Um, and while visitors conducted the task, we took notes on anything they did or said, and we also made note if they answered their questions the questions correctly. Um, and after pilot testing, we also decided to add some more demographic questions because we noticed a trend that a number of visitors were non-residents of Washington, so either out of state or out of the country. And we also changed some wording on some of our questions because certain things seemed to be unclear. Uh, we had a question asking visitors if they had attended a formal presentation, and most people did not recognize an animal feeding or a dive show as a, pre as a formal presentation. So we took out the word formal and we added an explanation of what a presentation might be, the feeding or the dive show. And after pilot testing and making those necessary changes, we began data collection. And we attempted to collect data during weekends and weekdays and mornings and afternoons so that our data sample was representative of all the visitors who come to the aquarium. And in total, we collected 84 instruments. Okay, for the data analysis, um, we got some pretty kind of polarizing numbers, some very large numbers and very small numbers that really are going to kind of highlight um, the answers to these evaluation questions. Uh, as you can see, uh, 25 out of 84 visitors were familiar with Seafood Watch pocket guides. And that number actually was originally going to be lower because when we would first ask them just based on name recognition, a larger majority said no, but then after we showed them the pocket guide, that number obviously jumped up a little bit, but 25 out of 84. So um, only 40% of members were aware of the Seafood Watch pocket guides. Uh, we're not really comfortable saying that this is indicative of all members because we only had 10 members in the in the sample. So um, 
out of random sampling, we were able to get 10. Uh, 27 of the individuals interviewed had been to the aquarium before. This was a very important uh, piece of data for us because we thought that this would be the best way to indicate whether or not the message was being given to the people or whether they're being made aware through the aquarium. Um, so looking at those numbers, um, you can see that 27 out of 84 visitors interviewed were repeat visitors, meaning that they had been to the Seattle Aquarium before, and 33% of those were aware of the Seafood Watch pocket guides. Um, overall, only 10% of the individual, of all 84 individuals that we interviewed, only 10% learned about the Seafood Watch pocket guides from the aquarium. So that's out of everyone, not just repeat individuals, but all individuals total. Um, so we looked at two different ways that they might receive this information, uh, signage and also from the presentations. Uh, looking at the signage, 26 a little over 26% of visitors remembered seeing signs for the Seafood Watch program and Pocket Guide. Uh, only six of the 84 visitors remembered information about the signage. So they're really, they weren't seeing the signs according to our data. They weren't really seeing the signs and they weren't really remembering if they did see them. So um, it kind of indicated that maybe the signage wasn't promoting the awareness of the Pocket Guides as much as it could. Um, looking at the programs, 32 out of the 84 visitors interviewed attended a program at the Seattle Aquarium. And these programs were like um, feedings and divings and other things where they might learn about sustainable seafood or about the Seafood Watch pocket guides. We actually added a question here. Um, so as, as you can see, the blue and the purple or the dark blue and light blue. Um, people were saying that they remembered sustainable seafood in the pilot testing but we kind of noticed that that answer might be different than being aware of the pocket guides, even though the information is similar. So we divided those into two separate questions to kind of identify that difference. 23% um, remember the programs mentioning sustainable seafood, and 12% remember the programs mentioning the Seafood Watch pocket guides. And ideally, I think you would want those to be fairly similar to each other, the number. Uh, 10 out of the 32 visitors who attended a program remembered the program mentioning sustainable seafood. Uh, the Seafood Watch Pocket Guide program or both. Um, this one was surprisingly different. Um, we found that it was very easy to use for the most part. Once they had it, um, they were able to use it. 39.3 uh, stated that the guide was useful or knowledgeable. And there, so this was an open-ended question that had a, a lot of different answers come to us. And to have 40% of them say that it was knowledgeable or useful um, was a fairly high number. And as you can see from the bar graph, a majority of people said that they would use it sometimes, often, or always. Um, we had a little bit of a problem in that the wording on one of our task questions said, what is the best choice for something? And that was kind of confusing, but we caught that early on, and I think only four of, the, of those tasks um, was that a problem with, so we removed those for this number of 82.5%. Uh, we determined know how to use the pocket guides based on the task, and that means that they answered all of the task questions correctly. Um, and also, based on their open-ended answers, they showed that they knew what it was useful for because they would mention things like restaurants, and they would mention things like grocery stores as places that they would use this guide. So kind of determined that once they did have it, it was fairly easy to use, and they were gleaning the information off of it they, they were expected to. There were some limitations, as we mentioned before, uh, the best versus good. Uh, we thought we dealt with that by removing those from our, our task numbers um, so that those wouldn't be reflected as a problem in the numbers. Um, the otter exhibit was closed for one day um, because of maintenance. We don't know if this really had an effect, but it was one less chance for people to become aware of it. So um, that day is noted in our, in our, in our notes. Um, cruise ships on the weekends may bring in different demographics. Um, so that may adjust the numbers a little bit if you're if the people that we're asking are are influenced because they're from out of state or from out of country, and that kind of brought in a larger number of those people. Um, beginning stages of passing out the pocket guides at the entrance, uh, based on the numbers we got, um, people weren't receiving them at the entrance, and <clears throat> we kind of thought that they were going to. And we're not really sure if they were just um, refuse. They, they didn't say that they were refusing because we asked them, but. Um, they didn't remember being asked or being given a pocket guide, so that may influence whether or not they were aware of it or not. Um, so the conclusions, <clears throat> these first three uh, titles here are their answers that were given 
to us by them as the three highest um, suggestions that they gave for ways to change how people would become aware. So handing out pocket guides at entry, uh, improving signage, and raising awareness. Um, some other things that we kind of um, got rid of were like, some people suggested, well, why don't you have an iPhone app? Well, you have, we have one. They're just not aware of it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's more of an awareness thing versus a resource thing. The resources are there. They just need to become aware of it. And these are the three things that they said. And also our data kind of shows that this was, as, it was, as we mentioned, the signage and um, awareness throughout was, was lacking a little bit. Uh, so based on the data, people do, they do not have strong awareness of the program, but once they do have the guides, we feel that they are effective and useful and they will know how to use them. Uh, we'd like to thank the aquarium and Justine for all her help and uh, you guys as well for helping us through this process. Thank you. Any questions?